Thirsty for some more because it was next day. I'm ready to read chapter 24. Come on, let's go. After this, we're gonna read Guest and Amy High Chip. Can't believe the journey's almost over. This was the beginning of my YouTube channel. Up for content because we've been finishing it. Chapter 24. Let's go. Hey guys, Dan Reed. Okay, Adam Ernest back with you another installment of Adam Reads. This is chapter 24. Two more chapters, guys. I'm just not ready for this journey to be over. We've got so far. So far, children. So far. How much video should I do? Okay, so we're doing one. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think eight videos already. I think eight videos, to be honest. Um, so we'll definitely be be doing like one more after we finish this book tonight. I'm pretty sure we'll finish it. Um, kind of tired, so we might not read guests till tomorrow, or maybe do some guests. I don't know. <clears throat> Chapter 24. Me and, his, and the preacher started walking and calling Wendix's name. I was glad it was raining so hard because it made it easy to cry. I cried and cried and cried, and the whole time I was calling for Wendixie. Wendixie, I screamed. Wendixie, the preacher shouted, and then he whistled loud and long. But Wendixie didn't show up. We walked all through downtown. We walked past the Dewberry's house and the Herman W. Block Memorial Library and Sweetie Pie's yellow house and could choose pets. We walked out to the friendly corners trailer park and looked under our trailer. We walked all all the way out to the open arms Baptist Church of Milwaukee. We walked past the railroad tracks and right on down Highway 50. Cars were rushing past us and there were tall lights glowing red, glowed red like mean mean eyes staring at us. Daddy, I said, Daddy, what if he's gone? What if he's got run over? Oh, preacher, preacher, we can't worry about what might have happened. All we can do is keep looking. We, we walked and walked, and in my head, I started on a list of ten things that I knew about Win Dixie that I could write down on a big old posters and you know, put around the neighborhood. The thing that I would help people look for. Number one, that he was a pop, a pathological fear of thunderstorms. Two, he had he was like to smile using all of his teeth. Number three, we could we was he could run fast. Number four was that he snored. Number five was that he could have catch mice without squishing them to death. Number six, he liked to meet people. Number seven, he would like to eat peanut he likes to eat peanut butter. Number eight, he he couldn't stand to be left alone. Number nine, he liked to sit on couches and sleep in beds. Number ten, he was number ten was he didn't mind going to church. I kept on going over on the list in my head. I memorized it in the same way I memorized the list of some things about my mama. I memorized it so if I didn't find him, I would have found some part of him to hold on to. But all at the same time, I thought of, oh, is this going to make me cry? The thing I never thought of before, and that was the ten list of things I couldn't even begin to show of somebody the real Win Dixie. Just like the list of ten things that couldn't, things that couldn't ever get me to know about my mama. And the thinking about that made me cry even more. Me and the preacher looked for a long time, and finally... He said we had to quit, but Daddy, I said, when Dixie's out there somewhere, we can't leave him. Oh, boy, said the preacher, we've looked and looked, and there's only so much we can, so much looking we can do. I can't believe you're going to give up, I told him. Indy Opal, Indy and Opal, the preacher said, rubbing his nose, didn't argue with me. I stood and stared at him. The rain had left him, left up some. He was mostly drizzled now. It's time to head back to the preacher, said no, I told him. You're going ahead and go. You go ahead and go, but I'm going to keep looking. Oh, poor, said the preacher, said a real sharp voice. It's time to give up. You always give up, I shouted. You're always putting your head inside your stupid old turtle shell. I bet you don't even go out looking for Mama when she left, but you are but you just let her run off too. Baby, said the preacher, I couldn't stop her. I tried, but you'd think I wanted to... 
her to stay too. You don't you don't you think I miss her every day? He spread his arms out wide and then dropped them to his sides. I tried, he said, I tried. Then he did something I couldn't believe. He started to cry. The preacher was crying. His shoulders were moving up and down and he was making suffering noises. And don't believe and don't believe that losing Win Dixie didn't upset me as much as it does you. He said, I love that dog. I love him too, Daddy. I said, I went and wrapped my arms around his waist. He was crying so hard he was shaking. It's all right, I told him. It's okay. Shh. I said to him, like he was scared of little kid. Everything, like he was scared, little kid. Like he was a scared little kid. Everything will be okay. We stood there hugging and walking back and forth. And after a while, the preacher stopped and shaking. And I still held on to him. And I finally got the nerve to ask the question I wanted to ask. Do you think she'll ever ever going to come back i whispered no the preacher said no i do not i've hoped and prayed all and dreamed about it for years but i don't think she'll ever come back gloria says that you can't hold on to everything that you got you can only love what you've got a while you got while you got it she she's right the preacher said gloria jump is right i'm not ready to let when dixie go i said i had forgotten about him for a minute what with thinking about my mama We'll keep looking, said the preacher. The two of us kept looking for him. But do you know what I said? Well, I just realized, Indiana Pool, when I told your mama it took everything with her, I forgot one thing, a really important thing that she left behind. What, I asked? You, he said. Thank God your mama left me you. And he hugged me tighter. I'm glad I got you, I told him, and I mean it. And I told off, and I t took his, took hold of his hand, and we started walking down we walking back into town, calling and whistling for Win Dixie the whole way. That is it of chapter twenty-four. We're gonna read chapter five, and then chapter six is the end, and then we're done.